So, you want to be a hero? Well, let's see if you've got what it takes. Step into our little guild practice grounds behind me. And if you can survive five rounds with... Horrocks, well, then maybe you might be a hero. Of course, if Horrocks rips you in half, I'm afraid you don't qualify. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Campaign Creator. My name is Guy and today we're looking at building in the organisation that we created last week. Before we go any further, this video is sponsored by World Anvil. World Anvil is our world aggregator of choice, our world creator of choice here on how to be a great GM. Their templates uh, provide amazing insight and give us direction as to where we might want to go in terms of creating our campaigns and our worlds. Check them out if you haven't. Now, down below, there is a 20% off special just for you guys who watch this video on this channel. So have a look at that 20% off getting a master or grandmaster uh, access key with World Anvil for a year. That's uh, pretty good going if you ask me. Now, we're talking guilds, clans, and other organizations. And when we look at our hero, hero, our heroic title, our hero title that we created last week, I started to realize that we need to expand that a little bit further. Not only do we have heroes running around, but the moment you've got some kind of institutionalized system, well, you always just start to get bureaucrats and, well, who minds that rock be wax in the first place that the seals are made out of? Who makes sure that the seals are as powerful as they are? Where do heroes go when they need to recover? What can we offer our PCs to make the world feel more livable, but also to add more adventures to the situation. Now, ultimately, those are my two goals in today's video, is to try and achieve reality and try and tr achieve immersion uh, in terms of the world feeling as if it is a living, breathing entity, and to create a space where we as the Game Masters can introduce adventures on the fly. Now, we've already spoken in other videos about having these job boards, these hero boards that pop up where the heroes can go and randomly select multiple adventures. There was actually a video about that where it was one of your options for keeping your campaign alive and growing and moving in different directions. Well, now we've got an option to institutionalize it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to work through creating the organization of heroes. Now, for that, we're going to switch over to World Anvil, of course. We're going to go through to our organization template and we're going to work through that. Busy unpacking what would go into a heroic guild. What would be the foundations of that? So we're going to put here uh, Heroes of the Realm Guild Organization. Not a very fancy title, but one that gives us insight anyway. So I'm going to come back to this vignette to fill this in. I'm wanting to work through it. So what is its type? Well... It's not an adventuring party. It's not a broadcasting studio. Uh, it's not a corporation. Um, it's not a royal court, I suppose, but it is a court system. Because remember, we have linked our heroes now to a rank within the realm. So I'm going to list it as a court system. What is the slogan or the motto? Do I still have it? No, I don't. I had hoped I still had it in memory. Um, it is to protect... The Realm with Honor. That's a short version, uh, I think. I'll go and find the real version later on. Uh, that's not the purview of today's video. Now, when it comes to crests, oftentimes, if you're like me, you have fairly little actual drawing skill in terms of designing good-looking crests, and you want to have a good-looking crest. So what can you do? Where can you go? Well, I have found this website, which I'm going to share with you, and um, they're called World Spinner. So it's worldspinner.com forward slash heraldry forward slash device underscore editor. I will um, put the link down below if I remember to do so. I'm just going to copy it quickly. And what it does is it allows you to then move through and make your own banners. Now it's keying out the green here. So I'm just going to change the green very quickly so that it stops doing that. Uh, there we go. It's purple now. 
Right, so you can go through and you can create your shield. There's so many different options. There's Trojan shields. I mean, it it really is the the the. It's up to you as to what sort of shape you want. I want my hero shape. I'm going to make the hero thing very quickly. So uh, it's called Orc. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Could be for the heroes. Maybe they have that particular type of shield. Um, I'm going to go with that. I'm actually going to go with that. Okay, so the field, we can choose now um, whether we want two animals. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. No animals whatsoever. I'm going to go with one here. And I'm going to go with animal. I think we've, and again, we've got so many choices to choose from here. I think, um, let's see, weapons and armor. What have we got? We've got a gauntlet. That looks pretty slick. They are about defending the realm, though. So there's an axe, bill hook, um, <clears throat> broad arrow, chamfron. That's quite nice. That's quite nice. The barding, the protecting of the realm could be cross swords. Very typical. Very typical. Those look more like daggers to me than anything else. Greek helm? Well, duh. Obviously, that fits beautifully with our Ethereos situation. We can change the color of it as well. I don't particularly like the color being... Uh, I quite like that yellow, actually. I think that's quite dramatic. Now, the division. Do we want to have a division or not? That's simply how does this, how does this break down. And you can have the purse sinister hand. Now, if you really want to know, sinister is your left. Is your left hand sinister and dexter? That's why you're ambidextrous. Uh, you have the ability to use your right hand twice. Ambi tw to uh, dexterous, obviously the right hand twice. The sinister hand and the dexterous hand, the dexter hand, sometimes called in the case of heraldry the bend as well. So we can choose what we want. There's a little bit of trivia for you. Uh, Perfez, yeah, that's kind of nice. Um, a pale per quarter. That's kind of dramatic. Per saltir. Mm, I actually quite like that. I quite like that. But should it be purple? Should it be yellow? No, it starts to get a bit sort of nuclear radioactive. Blue is quite dramatic. Mm, green. Oh, green's not bad either, except it's keying out in this case. It looks nice on my computer. Yellow we've tried. Red, a little bit too militant, I think. A bit too militant if it's black. And we change the charge. So we're changing up. That's pretty cool. Vision at the front and the back of their heads. That could work for me. Let's let's try some options here. No. Let's try white. Pretty much stands out whichever way we go. I do like the yellow, though. I do like the yellow. Now, the ordinary is something that we can add. That's an additional kind of color stripe if we really wanted it to. Uh, we can, yeah, we can play around however we want this. We could add a, a chevron in there so it kind of fills it out. We could put in a cross if we want to change. You know, so we really, really can go crazy with this this software. Now, I, I think it's really cool. Now, once we have done this, so we have built our, our shield. Let's say that this is going to be the shield for our heroes uh, just because we like it. Uh, we can now just go save as. It will save it up here. We're going to call this our... Um, Guild of Heroes um, Shield. It's a PNG. I like PNGs. Okay, it has been saved. I'm now going to go to Images in World Anvil. So that's these tabs on the side here. I'm going to go to Images. I'm going to browse a new image here. I'm going to choose Guild of Heroes. There we go. Open that up. This is called the Guild of Heroes... Uh, crest and the description is basically the same as the name guild of heroes crest and the tag i'm gonna put their crest uh crest heroes and um we can then go and just upload that quickly so we're gonna upload it okay great it's been uploaded this is our link our code if we wanted to find it but we don't have to worry about that i'm going to close that now I'm going to come back here, and where we have our crest section, all that we need to do is save the changes to our draft at the moment. Come back down here, and where it says crest, we're now going to select Guild of Heroes Quest. It is that easy. Uh, Denonym, this identifies members of this uh, group. I'm going to put here, not my residential address, addresses. I'm going to put here 
hero. Okay, so if you are a hero of the realm, you are identified as hero. Uh, public agenda to serve and pro ah, to serve with honor and protect the realm at the at all costs. It's not all for one and one for all. I admit it. I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. What are their assets? Buildings, troops. I'm going to say in every city there is a hero, a hall of heroes. It's not a new term, but it's going to work for now. A hall of heroes. A place of sanctuary for any hero who has attained at least one seal. So we were talking about those seals earlier on. You can go into Sanctuary and um, go through this. Um, one night's accommodation per seal, including meals, bathing, and minor equipment repair. A a uh, vendor is attached who will s sell most mundane equipment at 10% less to the hero. Okay, so there we go. A little bit of a history. We can come back to history. Founding date, dissolution date. They haven't dissolved. They haven't disbanded. Do we want to give them a leader? We could certainly give them a leader. Lady Jakar world. No. We could give them a leader if we wanted to. We haven't done that yet. Parent organization. Uh, well, no, we don't yet have a parent organization. Uh, we are busy in the presence of making that particular organization. We could put there the realm as in the hegemony of Ethereos if we really wanted to, but I'm not too phased by that. Uh, location doesn't really matter. They're all over the place. Ethnicities, again, we don't have to worry about that. Geopolitical organization. So if we want to kind of break it down even more, where's the capital? Who's the head of state capital? We could add in the cities and stuff if we really wanted to. It's not really that. Um, formation type, training level, veterans. Nah, we don't need to do that. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Obviously, once we put in this freeform vignette, we can, we can expand it further. Let's have a look now that we've got our shield in there, hopefully. There's our shield. To protect the realm with honor. I think that's pretty cool. And when we make this a handout, we can give this to our players so that they can see what the symbol, what the banner is that's hanging out. And that's all thanks to worldspinner.com forward slash heraldry forward slash device underscore editor. And of course, worldanvil.com who have made this entirely possible. I'm not going to go too much more in terms of creating this organization. Things that we want to look at. We want to look at things that are going to inspire adventures. So the organizational structure. We might need to have someone of authority who runs these guilds. Perhaps they are retired heroes whose seals have now faded but are preserved in these cases. I actually quite like that idea. I'm going to throw that in. So again, remember, it's about just adding in these little bits um each of the halls of heroes interesting how we pluralize that a retired hero i think it's only fair a retired hero who has on display in a magically sealed uh glass cabinet cabinet their old hero papers and seals which are now preserved for all time in the event of a hero not being available to available to operate the hall of heroes a suitable Replacement is found and the cabinet displays their service record. Not very exciting, but it adds flavor. And of course, we can now go and use that to have an adventure. 
Uh, this creates immersion. We can talk about the architectural style if we wanted to of these buildings. Are they built in a specific way? Are they just warehouses that have been purchased? Are they in the elite section of town? Are they in the slum section of town? Are, how are heroes perceived in our realm? We haven't looked at those things yet. I think they're going to be perceived as generally good. They help the people, but maybe they could do more. Maybe they could do less. So who knows? Who knows? Nonetheless, this is all part of the creation process of the clan that now is going to support our heroes guilds now of course our players may very well elect not to be part of the heroes guild in which case then they're going to be vagabonds but we now have the heroes guild where we can then draw on them for inspiration they can hire the players well we need your characters because someone's watching all the heroes there's that again we can work adventures from what we have because we now have something to work from that's it from me for this week fairly short video in comparison to the others but it's about creating organizations and you can work through different groups within we can go to the religious organizations of the cults that we have created in the past we can go back to the nobility and work out how the palaces operate we can create organizations as many organizations as we like but again core components what do you need versus what do you need to add adding is easier once you have your base and your base is what you really need to focus on but focus on the right base first before you start going off on stuff that's never going to crop up again your session zero should have informed you as to the type of characters that your players want to play as well as the type of campaign that they're looking for so at this point we should be building for that not for what we necessarily want we have given them some samples some hints maybe they all want to be griffin riders in which case this hall of heroes is well not redundant but it's the wrong track to take we should have been developing the griffin world where we talk about the griffin guilds who raises the griffins are there different statuses between a pegasus rider and a griffin rider and a wyvern rider ride wyvern rider uh, what are we doing in terms of that space if that's what our characters and our players picked up on in our uh, uh, session zero campaign anyway until next week as they say on world anvil light up the forge